he's one of those guys who, like, you never expect to do that stuff, you know? I was really shocked, to be honest. Two local teachers arrested in separate cases, and police are looking for more possible victims. She was, she was terrified, like, she didn't go to work that day. Where a man was spotted carrying a machete walking up to homes. Plus, rain is on the way, and that's bad news for Padres fans. What you can get instead after FanFest was canceled. Definitely been a dream, so uh, we're going to go out there and play hard. Let the madness begin. The Aztecs are getting ready to dance in the NCAA tournament this morning. It is 6 a.m. on Friday, March 22nd, and you're up with CBS 8. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being with us here on our Friday at 6 a.m. We want to get straight to some breaking news out of Santee, where there is currently a SWAT standoff underway. We appreciate you joining us here. I'm Evan Irani in for Eric Connert. And I'm Netta Irampur. This SWAT standoff happening, we're told, at an apartment complex. This is on Fanita Drive near Prospect Avenue. We did just speak with the Sheriff's Department. They tell us a suspect is barricaded inside an apartment. Again, it's in the Santee area. At this point, not clear what led up to this standoff. We do have a crew there on scene. We're working to get as much information as we can and bring you a live look momentarily. And also, we are talking about some weekend wet weather that is coming our way. We know about FanFest yes. for the Padres. Uh, a Making little bit of an interruption mm -hmm. in plans. So here's the thing. Today, our Friday, is a dry day, but Saturday and Sunday are both going to be uh, rainy type of days, scattered showers, we could say. Uh, for the next 12 hours here, you can see temperatures are climbing to the upper 60s. A little bit of fog to start off this morning. Uh, temperatures mostly in the 50s right now, and you can see where visibility is. We're at four miles in Oceanside. Some improvements have been made, but Miramar down through Kearney Mesa still looking at the lowest visibility, less than a mile there. We'll keep track of that this morning. We'll also in just a few minutes be talking about the rain that is coming, how much to expect, and about the wind uh, along with it. Evan, thank you. And now more breaking news to bring to you at this hour. San Diego police investigating a death after a person fell from the border wall. This happened about 1130 last night in Otay Mesa. You see on the map here is near Britannia Boulevard. That's close to Cross Border Express. The medical examiner is there on the scene. Police tell us they will handle the investigation since the person died on the U.S. side. We are working to gather more information and we'll be sure to bring you the latest updates. Two local educators are both under arrest this morning in two separate cases. At Hoover High, an associate principal is facing child porn charges. And at Mount Carmel High, uh, drama teacher is accused of sexually assaulting a student for two years. She's expected in court today. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live at the downtown courthouse as police search for more possible victims. Chris? Yeah, good morning, and that arraignment will be taking place at 1.30 this afternoon. But these alleged crimes uh, supposedly took place between the years 2017 and 2019. As for the victim, they were 15 at the time in which this happened. And while now police have 39-year-old uh, Stacy Walker in custody here, accused of sexually assaulting this minor. Now, this relationship, again, allegedly occurred from 2017 to 2019. The victim came forward after, uh, after again, after she had turned 18. This relationship allegedly ended after the victim turned 18 as well, too. Now, according to police, uh, they found several pictures, videos, and explicit messages detailing the time in which Walker was uh, currently or was allegedly committing this assault. Police say that Walker also met with the victim several times and engaged in various sex acts. Now, she is not currently teaching, but she, that's because she's on leave. We did speak with students at Mount Carmel High School who had this to say about Walker. I was really shocked, to be honest, because I wasn't, I wasn't like, I didn't hate the teacher. I, she really, she treated me pretty well, so it was like, it was not something I expected, but I mean, it is what it is. It happened. And thankfully, uh, again, the victim was able to come forward. That's how they were able uh, to get this information. So what San Diego police are asking for right now is that if anybody has any information about any other potential victims or this specific case that you come forward, you can report them to San Diego Police Department or remain anonymous with Crime Stoppers. Evan and Netta. 
All right, Chris, thank you very much. And in the meantime, an associate principal at Hoover High School in City Heights has been placed on leave after being arrested on child porn charges. San Diego police say Charles DeFritis was taken into custody off campus earlier this week on charges of distributing lewd material to a minor and possession of child pornography. This investigation was launched after a minor alleged DeFritis had sent and requested illicit images through a social media app. Students say they were blindsided by the arrest. He was respectful. He was always like, you know, making sure there's no drugs on the campus. Just always being a good principal until like, well, I never knew none of this was going on. Detectives are now searching for other potential victims. And right now, neighbors in Rolando Park are voicing concerns after a man with a machete was caught on video walking up to homes. Take a look at this video. You can just see there that man on the left hand side of your screen uh, with a red hoodie walking toward the steps and then pausing when the light comes on. Many neighbors want more police patrols in that area. San Diego police tell us they are forwarding this incident to their investigators. And now we have a major development this morning when it comes to the sewage crisis in the South Bay. Today, Congress expected to vote on a spending bill, and that would include $156 million for the International Boundary and Water Commission, the IBWC. That's the agency that maintains the wastewater treatment plant, the one in San Ysidro. Officials say the funding is still $103 million more than last year, but not the 310 million that's needed to fix that San Ysidro plant. County officials say since 2022, 35 billion gallons of sewage has flowed into U.S. territory from the treatment plant. There's one in Mexico as well, 40 million gallons a day. Uh, this morning, Padres Fan Fest, it's canceled. That's because of the rain this coming weekend. They're also moving tomorrow's celebration of life for late owner Peter Seidler earlier to 11 a.m. So instead of one, it'll be at 11. And tickets to Fan Fest, if you had them for Sunday, you can claim up to four free tickets to attend either Monday or Tuesday's exhibition games while those tickets remain. So if you can have a Monday or Tuesday off now, uh, okay. that will have to be how... We need to adjust. Fan Fest is a, a big bit. one, so right. changing those plans. Well, last season, San Diego State University was the Cinderella story of the NCAA tournament. Of course, March Madness that everyone's talking about. Oh, yeah, about. and they're looking to recreate that March Madness magic this year. We'd love to see them <laughs> take it all the way. Uh, CBS 8's Jake Gariani is in Spokane, Washington, with a preview of the Aztecs' first matchup, which is happening in just over four hours. And a very happy Friday morning to you back in San Diego. I'm Jake Gariani here in Spokane at the Spokane River in the beautiful state of Washington. And of course we are here because the Aztecs are back in the NCAA tournament, something they have done quite frequently. In fact, San Diego State has gone to 11 of the last 14 NCAA tournaments, and this is their fourth straight year in the big dance. Now, the Aztecs will start later today against the University of Alabama Birmingham tip off set for 10:45 a.m. But the Blazers are just a small part of a very difficult bracket that the Aztecs find themselves in. San Diego State has to be happy they didn't end up all the way out on the East Coast, but they are in the East region, which is just stacked. It has the number one overall seed in the Yukon Huskies, who are the defending national champion. It has the Big 12 tournament title winner in Iowa State, the Big 10 tournament title winner in Illinois, the SEC tournament title winner in Auburn, and a Final Four team from a year ago in Florida Atlantic. So if the Aztecs want to go on any sort of run like they did a year ago, they have them work cut out for them, and head coach Brian Dutcher knows that. Looks like the Final Four from last year. Connecticut, Florida Atlantic, and San Diego State all in the same region, so uh, in the same bracket. Obviously, we're fortunate to be out west to start. You know, I like that, but uh, hopefully we have an opportunity to travel across the country next week. Oh, definitely. I mean, March Madness is what you, what you, uh, you know, want to want to do in college basketball. Uh, I've been dreaming of March Madness. I've been fortunate to go all four years, so it's definitely been a dream. So uh, we're going to go out there and play hard. And look, that's kind of the big picture, looking at the part of the bracket that the Aztecs are in. But any good cliche coach is going to say, you got to take it one game at a time. That's exactly what Brian Dutcher would say to me right now. And that one game is today against the University of Alabama, Birmingham, a team that comes in on a roll. They have won five straight games, including their conference tournament title, the AAC against Temple. The Aztecs 
not so much. Lost three of their last five, including the Mountain West Tournament title against New Mexico. So two teams on two different paths entering the NCAA tournament. We'll see how much of a factor that plays tomorrow. This is also just the second time these two teams have ever faced off. The last coming all the way back in 1989. It'll be strangers out there on the floor today. I'm Jake Mirani from Spokane, Washington. Let's go ahead and send it back to you in San Diego. I cannot get over how beautiful that river is. Yeah, right? Wow, that's amazing. Spokane Right river. to the heart of downtown yeah, Spokane. Yeah, that's right. In downtown Spokane, we would, when I used to live there, we would flow in inner tubes on We're that river. It is there. rushing it right now. It was calmer, now. right? Yes, when it's <laughs> okay. much calmer in the summer, it nice. just flows slowly oh. and you can inflate some inner tubes and go uh, just hanging out along the water. But yeah. right now, not a good idea right. to get in that water. And it's right also now, very cold. We're thinking basketball. Yes, so, well, <laughs> right. Our sights are set on the Aztecs in Spokane right now wishing them the best uh, here in San Diego. We're kind of flipping our weather around a bit. We are looking at the wet weather and that's going to start up tomorrow. So Saturday into Sunday seems to be a great opportunity for our rain to begin this morning. We've got some fog as we start off the day. Temperatures mostly in the 50s we will warm up really nicely this afternoon. Dry skies 60s and then we'll be cooler cloudier with that chance of rain going into Saturday and Sunday. Bit of a roller coaster ride into next week. We'll climb up to 40% going into Tuesday of next week and then drop down again for Wednesday, Thursday. So your weekend beach forecast, although I wouldn't suggest spending too much time at the beach, uh, we've got increasing clouds on Saturday, a 50% chance of rain climbing to about 70% by Sunday. Showers are much more likely on Sunday and temperatures notice that they are cooler. So this afternoon, for example, we've even got some low 70s expected, but by the time we get into Saturday afternoon, we're down to 61 Sunday afternoon, 60 degrees. So about a 10 degree drop in many spots, including along the coast and inland question on everyone's mind is how much rain are we going to be looking at? Well, rain is going to start up Saturday afternoon and it will continue through Sunday as we push this model all the way through your Sunday afternoon. We're anticipating about an inch in total. These models can and probably will change. However, what we have pretty decent confidence in is about half an inch to an inch of accumulating rain. Escondido at three quarters, Poway at one inch, El Cajon nine tenths of an inch. Uh, if we look at your current temperatures out the door right now, we are looking pretty good out there. Again, some spots are seeing some fog, so reduce your speeds, but temperatures are really mild. 40s uh, inland, 50s mostly along the coast right now. 57 degrees in San Diego. Good morning in Encinitas at 54, Alpine at 47. Let's check in on how traffic is going as we kick off your morning. It's 612 on the clock right now, and so far, Biggest thing that we're seeing is that we have that fog out there. So again, reduce your speeds area in yellow there on the screen is uh, showing spots where visibility is significantly reduced and that's disproportionately affecting North County right now. Taking a look at, look at border wait times as we start off your six o'clock hour. It's an 80 minute wait at the San Ysidro port of entry. That's matched at the Otay Mesa port of entry, both at about an hour 20 in total this morning. Still ahead here, shocking new video of migrants rushing the border in Texas. What happened to them next? Plus a hot air balloon crash caught on camera. Wow, why first responders are calling this a miracle. And State Farm stopped writing new policies in California months ago. Now they're taking things even further.